Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Ah, uh, D'Anthony. Yep. We're in the middle of it, aren't we? Um, yeah. The middle of the, the apocalypse. Maybe? Yeah. Yeah. We need some Cheetos. Look at you. Every time we start a show and you, you put on hand sanitizer, it freaks me the fuck out. Makes you, me think that you don't trust me. I no, I no. You're a dirtbag. Mm. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Alex, stop staring at me, dude. God damn it. Uh, look, kids, we got a we got a fun show today. Jerry Wayne is gonna call in. If you don't know who Jerry Wayne is, he went viral about uh, eight or nine days ago, somewhere yep. in there. Um, he was the uh, the man inside the auto plant in Michigan, Detroit, yep. who uh, talked to Joe Biden about it, uh, about the 2A rights. In I mean, honestly, I feel like if you get into a discussion with the former vice president of the United States and the former vice president tells you you're full of shit and you know, ask you to step outside so he can fight you, that's a, that is a win. Big win. All around for both sides. I think it was funny that Biden did it, and I think it's funny that he kept his composure and just kept talking. Yeah, like everybody, same. I feel like everybody won in that situation if Biden had just leaned into it. Like, if, his, if the next day he, his press conference would have been something like, yeah, I mean, we're dudes talking. We get heated. Middle America, men especially in Middle America, would have been like, yeah, I got it, yeah. yeah. But instead he's like, oh, fuck you, man. We don't do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Just trying to walk it back. No. If anything that we've learned from Trump sticks, it should be that you can do whatever you want as long as you tell people to get fucked when they, when they say you shouldn't have done it. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's nothing wrong with admitting a mistake, but – these, these, like, oh, that was egregious. Just relax, dude. I've yeah, said, I said worse fun. shit to that. Like, as soon as I wake up in the morning, I'm like, fuck you and fuck everybody else. Yeah. Every morning. Yeah. So, like, come on, man. I, I've, I've screamed worse things in my car when Panera forgets extra dressing on my fucking salad. What you know, kind like, of salad do you get there? I get the Greek. I go the full Greek with chicken. Yeah. Um, that's my go-to. I like that. It's uh, my jam. I like the grilled cheese that has like uh, sun dried tomatoes and bacon on it. Ah, That's a good one. It yeah, pairs yeah, really nicely yeah. with a broccoli cheddar soup. Yeah, and, and, uh, and a Malbec. If you get a nice Malbec no, with I, that. No, I'm not at Panera. <laughs> Are you just sitting in the car drinking out of a single wine yep. bottle? One barefoot bottle of Malbec oh, in God. your car, eating there, your grilled cheese. There's and drinking there's your some soup. there's some nurse on her break right now doing that she's been working 14 hour days for the last two weeks since all this stupid shit started by the way shout out yeah. to all you nurses and first responders out yep. there we're trying to work the on real fucking heroes yeah. it's weird in a, in a time of global crisis yep you find out who the real fucking heroes are it's not lawyers it's not billionaires it's not billionaires it's it's actual normal people who or keep the fucking trucking industry. People that you fucking whine about all the time. The, the delivery clerks people, in the grocery cooks, store. Yeah. yeah, man. All of them. Yeah. Uh, and shout out <laughs> to our first responders who are going through the shit. It's got to be fucking crazy, yeah. man. Getting a call and then showing up uh, all the way around. Uh, firemen, police, paramedics. Yeah. Showing up at some house not knowing if one of these dirty fucks has coronavirus yeah. or... Or on the flip side, showing up and, and thinking these people might have it, yeah. and then you got to deal with that as well. Well, we're trying to uh, do something. Well, with Black Rifle, I know this past weekend, um, our our buddy over at the uh, Dallas Cowboys, he's a Tank Lawrence. End. Yeah, yep. Tank Lawrence did a thing where uh, if you showed up in uniform with your ID, they gave you free food to take home, mm -hmm. basically um, essentials. I don't know if they, I think they had toilet paper and shit there too, like essential stuff that they had grabbed just for first responders, and now. We're trying to figure out a way with Black Rifle to do something like that. It, the problem is, is they're like it's easy for cops because they all work in the same spot. Sure, or they have unions or whatever the case yeah, yeah. is that we can deal with, or they have organizations like Humanizing the Badge and other ones. Um, with nurses and stuff like that, it's harder because you can't just go drop off a bunch of coffee at a fucking hospital. Right? Sure. So if you're out there, and I've talked to uh, Eric Totel and a couple other people about this already, if you're out there and you know a way for us to get a large amount of coffee products to nurses and EMTs and shit like that, reach out to me, reach out to Ross, reach out to Jared, whomever, uh, and let us know so we can get this shit done. Because we're trying to fucking give back a little bit. We know those people are working their asses off right now. Yeah, no, I, you know, I was uh, Instagram live on uh, Saturday night with, with my wife, and um, somebody, you know, popped in, which is, I do enjoy that about Instagram. Now you can just take yeah. calls from strangers, <laughs> essentially, and... Um, uh, one of them was a, a huge listener. Um, he was deployed overseas. I wasn't allowed to say where he was, but he goes, hey, man, um, when you talk to the Black Rifle Coffee guys, tell them we all said thank you. And I was like, sure, what happened? And he goes, 
man, a fucking huge ass pallet full of yeah. coffee just <laughs> showed up over here unannounced and it was just for us and that was it. And, uh, and he goes, man, those guys really walk the talk. And I was like, yeah. oh yeah, they do it all the time. And I was like, shit, I'm, I, I will tell them, man, th thanks. It's, it's awesome to hear. So they'll do it. Um, but it's been going on for years now. Years, I mean, dude. Years. I think, uh, 50, it, what is it? 15,000 pounds they delivered last year overseas or something crazy like that? 50. 50. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, by the way, go to blackriflecoffee.com, uh, promo code yep. drinking bros 20. Uh, if you're out there, they get a, they're fire sale and a bunch of stuff trying to help people out as well so. also another group that pen and this is again this isn't a fucking paid partnership right not now, at all but uh this this group that black rivals worked with before on veteran small business pen fed pentagon mm -hmm. federal credit union um they're doing a program right now we don't have any literature on it yet I'm, I'm still reaching out to those people but they're doing a program specifically for veterans and active military and first responders and shit that will supplement your income in the meantime while all this bullshit's going on, if you've been displaced from work. I don't have enough information to really give it to you right now, but if you, it's P-E-N-F-E-D, Pen Fed. Okay. So if you can, you know, look that up on the internet, maybe you can find it uh, until we can get some actual information for you. Um, and as always, like, like we said uh, last week, we are gonna go every single day. We're gonna go every single day on Drinking Bros. Um, we realize uh, people are stuck in their houses and all we've, all the messages we've gotten have, have said, hey man, can you guys put out more shows and more content and things? We're bored as shit. Yes, we will continue to do that as this goes along, however long it lasts, um, or until we get shut down. But even then, I think we have the equipment we're, we're in exempt. our houses. Yeah. We're exempt from all that bullshit. I think anyways. so, right? Because yeah. um, we're considered essential. We're entertainment is considered essential. I, I think that was a smart move on the government. I do too. I'm surprised because people would be upset oh, if they'd that were raging. Not um, They'd be raging. So we are going to go every single day and um, either be it live on our YouTube page on Drinker Bros Podcast, um, or if we're doing interviews like the one we are today, mm -hmm. it'll be up at 8, 8 p.m. EST that night, uh, audio and video, and, uh, and we're here for you guys. We're just going to keep going until whenever this ends, and we'll figure it out, um, obviously, because this pandemic is... It doesn't seem like it's slowing down anytime soon, but Dan, I wanted to talk to you about it because before we went on air today, you said there was a combination of drugs that has proven to be successful. Explain it to the audience. <laughs> well, I mean, they're going to do trials now, but it's, uh, um, I think, was it Australia that first started using it? It's it's a combination of what you all know as ZPAC, mm -hmm. so like a a mithras something or some shit. I don't know how to say the word because Latin's stupid. Yeah, but. you go in, you, your, your doctor gives it to you. It's one pill every day for four days. I think two more, on the first more day. More or less. I think, th I think the bigger, there's there's two different Z-packs. One of them is eight pills or something like that mm -hmm. over the course of eight days. Um, They've got it now. They've got it pared down mm -hmm. to, because I just took one. Yeah, it's like in a literal pack. Ironically, yeah. I just took one uh, <clears throat> two weeks ago before we went to Texas. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's a combination of that and a malaria drug that a lot of first responders and military people will be familiar with. It's basically quinine, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that apparently that combination in all the test groups that they've done in other countries so far has, has limited the, the time that you actually have coronavirus down to about four to five days. And, and also while you have it, the symptoms are way lower than they were before. So um, Trump the other day was talking about the FDA speeding up the process for trials and stuff, which is absolutely true. Somehow CNN heard that as he's endorsing that as a treatment, so go out and get it right quick. No, mm -hmm. no, nobody said that. As a matter of fact, uh, Mehmet Oz, Dr. Oz, yeah. who everybody's familiar with, <clears throat> has stepped up, so kudos to him, spending his own money to fund a trial with about 100 people mm -hmm. um, over the course of 10 days. I think it's going to start. I think it may have already started, actually. Right. Um, and that's a significant number of people to be in testing conditions. It's not not enough necessarily. It's not. Well, I'm not not going to say it's not enough, but it's it's a blind study, so people don't know which drug they're getting. Right, double blind study. Right. And it's also a, a wide swath of different types of people with different symptoms and all this stuff. So it's an actual scientific trial, not just anecdotal shit. So we'll know in a in a week or two, I guess, by the end of next week probably, if that's a legit treatment or not. Now, as far yeah. as the long term side effects or anything like that. Who knows? Oh. But I know I'm, I'm super irritated with CNN. Not, not that that's anything new. Yeah. But Jesus they've been they, they wrote an article, which I see now is not even on their website anymore, saying that Trump endorsed this. And then fucking we now we're hearing there are side effects from Nigeria, like three, two dudes overdosed on quinine. Mm -hmm. Don't overdose on quinine. Yeah, folks, <laughs> that's a pretty easy one. And then another guy was like, yeah, it makes you really itchy. Like, oh, shit. 
Is that better or worse than dying? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Would you rather feel like you're going to die or just itch yeah. a little bit? Um, the point is necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah. And, uh, you know, America's pretty good at figuring shit out. Just relax. Yeah. I, I think more and more importantly is, is try to find a way to keep interjecting yourself back into the economy if you can. Like, if you're bored at home right <sighs> now, go fucking, you can go download the Postmates app and become a Postmates employee in, like, two days. Yeah, and, and by the way, you can <clears throat> actually, if you sign up for Postmates and have never used it before, you yeah. can use the promo code Drinking Bros and yeah. actually get uh, shit shipped to you for free. Like, it's free deliveries for up to $100 yeah, if you've now, never used it. Before, it was only some of the other companies in, in, in smaller cities that delivered stuff from Walgreens and CNN and shit like that. Now, Postmates has opened that up to every city, yeah, more or less. So if you need, like, whatever the fuck you need from those places, they'll you can get it delivered straight to your house now. And if you're, I mean, seriously, if you're fucking bored as fuck and you got kids at home, yeah, and you need to get the fuck away from a little bit and go make some extra cash and work for Postmates. A little hey, bit. man, uh, they're hiring. Amazon's <laughs> hiring. So is Walmart. Walmart is actually hiring. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk to you about what you said about the economy earlier. We're about twenty minutes from the market close, and uh, it's down about eight hundred points mm -hmm. right now. Um, it, a lot of people don't understand why the stock market is a big deal. Um, can you explain why we can't have the market and economy crash during this? Well, I mean, one, the the biggest the reasons. economy is is obviously easy because we need to keep people working. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the market look only about forty eight percent of Americans are directly invested in the stock market, mm -hmm. but most people's pensions are in four hundred one ks. Yeah, four hundred one ks are are invested, whether it's a blind fund or whatever it is. Um, I don't think the market is an overall indicator of how healthy the economy is because. If, if it's a sample size of less than half the country, it can't be. This is how it works. But <clears throat> it's important insofar as it re like people from all over the world are investing into it. A lot of money comes into the United States via the stock market. Mm -hmm. It's not just some random mark. Like we, we make a lot of money as a country off the stock market. Uh, and, you know, I guess it, it's almost as much of a fucking uh, – uh, it's it's how it looks like the stock market should be up yeah well i mean look it, it, you look at american airlines right and I, which i just pulled up i used to own i i own a bunch of stocks um now i, I look at only on a couple but um uh i look at american airlines which i i used to own at one point that was in the high 40s uh even low 50s it is down to ten dollars right now mm -hmm. nobody's flying obviously um they have not yet grounded domestic travel i'm sure that will be upon us soon how do, you stay in, how do you stay in business? I don't think that's going to happen. You don't think so? No. Okay. I, I think that people have self-quarantined enough with regard to air travel that it's not going to be necessary to shut it down, which is good and bad. You know what I mean? Like consumer confidence is the big part of the stock market that, that gets overlooked. It's not, about, it's not about the stock market being over 20000 or or twenty five or or going up a bunch in one day and going down a lot in another day. It's about consumer confidence, and it's also about how much money those publicly traded companies are investing back into the economy, how many people they're hiring, shit like that. So it's a good representative of how those things are going, which are big parts of the economy in general, right? Yeah, and mm -hmm. I mean, look, I, I know Trump's been saying 14 or 15 days, right? Yep. Um, that, that, do, do you think that's long enough? Because um, that, that is a great debate right <laughs> now behind the scenes. Everything you said last week on this show looks like it's starting to come to fruition as right. far as you know it's just old people dying or mm. people with respiratory problems yep. and, and things <laughs> like that um the reason why there's such a high number of deaths in italy and spain is because they have an older population there and much it is older. the older much they also much older yes have a shitty hell. i mean italy is a fucking second world country i don't know if if you guys who have been there have been stationed there it's not like it is here not at all like there's a lot no. of villages there that just like you have to drive a while to get to anywhere that has decent health care. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like it's you not just like, can't make it there in time. Yeah, it's just not like it is here. Uh, and we, we take it for granted. Like something we, we get on a plane and the Wi-Fi doesn't work. We're like, Man, fuck this shit. Yeah, yeah. But they're lucky just to have a Fiat that, that doesn't have the side mirrors knocked off of it already. Because usually they are because of those slam ass roads with the fucking concrete That's funny. embankments. Uh, yeah, we take a lot of shit for granted here, but it's uh. I think 15 days is probably about right, and here's the reason. They, the government right now thinks, and, and you can see the medical officials trying to stay a little calmer about it than mm -hmm. Trump is, but they're very hopeful about this new situation. 
Um, <clears throat> now, when you say situation, the cure or after the 15 days? The cure part. Okay. And, and a little bit of both. Like the, 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 I don't think the numbers are as bad as they thought they were going to be. And uh, like the, the mortality rate, the last numbers I saw, it was down to like 1.2 and a half percent. Out of like the that. people that were infected, right? Out of the people who reported being infected, okay. which means the actual mortality rate is sub one by a okay. wide margin. So it's more on par with the flu like we thought it was before and not necessarily like the 4% we saw in China or Italy, mm -hmm. right? Um, <clears throat> but I think they're hopeful about this. It doesn't really answer why the Democrats are using this opportunity to, they, like they just voted again today. Uh, they, they did, yeah. Against did, did that it procedure pass? No. It did not pass. Nope. Wow, so that is, that is two, because the other one uh, we're recording on Monday, last night, yeah. right around you know, 3.45 in the afternoon. This will air at 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, the first vote was last night. They did not pass that. And the second one did not pass as well? Correct. Is that right now? $2 trillion stimulus bill fails a second procedural vote over Democratic opposition. Um, Democrats. Yeah, of course. Uh, but I, I mean, I get, I get part of it. Hmm. Like, they, don't, they want more money going to people and in addition to money going to businesses. I get it. I mean, I, I think it's fucked up. Like, you don't, this isn't the time to draw a line in the sand. No, definitely um, not. Um, yeah, I, uh, breaking news right here. Um, the Olympics <clears throat> has now been postponed to 2021. If you're looking for a little humor in today, veteran, uh, <laughs> international Olympic committee member, Dick pound. Mm. That is Dick pound. Yes. That is his real name. That is not short for anything. Is it a pound sign or is it actually P O U N D? No, it is actually P O U N D, which mm. makes it worse. If it was yeah. a pound sign, I would. That should be his rapper name, that. Dick Pound. Well, it's his real name. Uh, <laughs> he says the Tokyo Olympics are going to be postponed. Do you think his license plate is D C K pound sign? Oh, uh, I hope so. Because that would be so. that'd be a fucking dope baller. Speaking of veterans, by the way. Wait, wait, wait uh, real quick, yep. and I hate to interrupt you here. <laughs> um, the top two trending things in America. Not the coronavirus. It is National Puppy Day. Um, and uh, Dick Pound is now trending number two in America. Nice. So that's where our thoughts are right now. Hopefully we'll see some memes come, come <laughs> to fruition. Oh, that. if you go to Twitter, it just says Dick Pound drops the hammer on the Olympics. Do you remember when uh, <laughs> ESPN published that article and it said the chink in the, the uh, armor? The armor. Yeah. And they were talking about the fucking Knicks, and it was Jeremy Lin. Jeremy Lin, yeah. Like, come on. Are you kidding me? You can't say that, you assholes. Anyways, uh, regarding veterans, Clint Romache put out a fucking video last week. I don't know if you guys saw it or not, but it was like <clears throat> just talking about how a lot of, like he's been noticing personally and, and just from his personal experience that veterans aren't really overreacting to this because we've all done this before mm -hmm. like we've been in a situation for a year year and a half at a time where we just, we just don't we can't do what we want we don't have anything yeah yeah, right? yeah. yeah. like we're eating fucking cold soup out of cans <laughs> and shit so we're just like oh we'll just do that for a while it's fine like having i've we've gone 45 days without a goddamn shower before or stuff like that yeah it's like everybody's like oh freaking <laughs> out his point about it wasn't that we're better it's like hey you can fucking be a leader right now like teach it may seem stupid or silly or simple to you right now, but just recount some of your experiences over there with people here that are freaking out. Be like, hey, here's what we did to fucking not get bored or fucking deal because it's boring as shit sometimes. Oh and yeah, it's all, you're you're over there and it's it's uh it's not great. No, no, right? it definitely so, isn't. Definitely isn't. <clears throat> um. Anyways, so are your thoughts still on this six to eight week? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it's gonna take the uh. The, the market a little longer to recover, obviously. Oh, yeah. But dumping all this money, anytime you can dump money into the market. So after World War II, we spent a fuck ton of money and went into debt in World War II, but our economy was never better than the 1950s after that, after the fucking GI Bill and a bunch of other shit that came out. Anytime <clears throat> the government puts our money back to work and mm -hmm. doesn't just hoard it or spend it on useless bullshit, like any, if, if, we, if all of our tax dollars went towards what it is right now healthcare defense and fucking funding the economy yeah like boosting the economy we would, this country would be out of control yeah but that's not how it is it gets spent on bullshit all the time special interest projects and dumb shit right right so every now and again a crisis and chaos will produce something great and i think we have an opportunity to do that now the uh <clears throat> secretary the fed guy 
Uh, what's his name? I can't pronounce his last name. Mnuchin? Doctor. No, 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 not Mnuchin. Uh, <laughs> the other guy, the doctor. Buck. What's his name? Not not the Fed, not the Pious? Fed chairman. No, it, it starts with an F. Dr. Uh, something. Focaccia. Right? Focaccia bread. I don't think it's that, but it's close. Uh, very, very close to <clears throat> focaccia. Uh, it's Fauci. Yeah. F-A-U-C-I. Is that how you say it, though? Uh, I don't know. That's, it that's might be my, Fauci. Fauci, It's, it's F-A-U-C-I. Um, Probably Fauci. Anyways, uh, I think... Is that who is that? Is that Jared? Um, anyways, I think that, or I don't think today he said something along the lines of, "Look, the quicker we can get back to operating normally, mm-hmm. the better the economy is going to be." Like we don't want to extend this beyond because he was talking about uh, doing a federal or like a nationwide lockdown. They are, they are not even considering that, is my understanding. I, you know, that's what I heard too. And like you know, because it it gets to a point where you decide how many the small amount of deaths versus your entire economy crashing and, and that may seem callous but that is work that's what it means to run a country sometimes it is and the tough decisions have to be yeah. made very few presidents face it i mean look yeah. I, i'll say <laughs> I, I can't remember something like this except for a lot the last time nine mm-hmm. eleven. that stuff was just shut down like this yeah nine yes. eleven before that right the gas shortage in the late seventies under Carter mm-hmm. was kind of like that. Uh, before that, World War II probably. I don't know. Maybe some of the riots in Chicago uh, in the sixties. I think the assassination of JFK probably shut the nation down for a couple of days, though. Yeah. Um, I mean, not like this. Nah, this is it, this is crazy, <laughs> and uh, we we certainly haven't <laughs> seen this um, in our history. But uh, yeah, we got Jerry Wayne on the show. We're going to call him in a second. We get some sponsors, though, who pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. They are now up to 25% off of everything in the store. They have upped it. They went from 20 to 25. Get it, man. Uh, look, mattresses, pillows, sheets, covers, adjustable bases. The adjustable bases are 50% off. Um, if, you, if you get a mattress, you get two free pillows with it. And there's a 36-month pay-as-you-go program, no interest. So that way it knocks it down to like 20 bucks a month. If we are stuck inside for a while, you might as well do it in comfort. Um, and the beds are affordable. And goddamn, if they aren't the best on the planet, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. And check out their deals. It gets shipped right to your house. You don't have to go anywhere, nothing. They're still dropping off things at your house. Uh, it comes right in a box. Boom, you pop it open, and you're good to go. Uh, drag it right in your room. Coronavirus free, they're saying. Yeah, it's a hermetically sealed bag. Yeah, good to go on that. Yep. Good to go on that. Next up, we got KillCliffCBD.com. Look, man, if you're around your family, what, are they 30% off? Fucking A. Yeah, 30%. Yeah. That just shocked my mind. 30% off. KillCliff CBD cans. I, I'm shocked because this is the greatest goddamn thing on the planet. If you're with your family trapped inside after day eight or nine or whatever this is at this point, bro. Throw a little CBD down the old gullets. Go to KillCliffCBD.com. 25 milligrams in every single can. You will not piss hot if you've got to take a drug test for anything, man. Um, this is uh, There's no THC in these. It's KillCliff. And it's a name you can trust. No sugars, no carbs, no nothing, man. It's great. And it's like 15 calories. That's it. But it's the CBD that really kicks you right in the ding-dong, dude. Helps me relax. I drink a can of this every night. I love it. I hope they stay on forever because it's the fucking easiest. Them, most of our sponsors are like fucking go spend. All this shit is the easiest to say, hey, man, go out and buy it because we yeah. fucking actually use it every goddamn day. Yep. Uh, so go to KillCliffCBD.com. Promo code Drinking Bros gets you 30% off and free shipping. Um, that is key in times like this, especially because it's canned. Knocks that shit down to like $2.50 a can. You cannot beat this. I promise you it is worth it. Yep. Throw it in the vodka, too, if you're drinking, um, which we are drinking a lot of as a nation right now. Uh, go to KillCliffCBD.com. Promo code Drinking Bros 30% off. Uh, gets you free shipping uh, with that promo code as well. Yep. So, and if you're going to be, uh, if you're going to get a job at Postmates, make sure you get some Raycon headphones. To, yeah, Because you don't necessarily want to walk into a conversation with a, unsuspecting citizen no you don't with us in the background i wouldn't recommend it anyways no whenever we meet people out in public i'm like uh like oh you should listen to the show or somebody says that and i'm like yeah not at work not around your children but yeah you, no, should, listen. But you should definitely listen to yeah the show. you should listen uh and if you're gonna listen listen with some raycon go to buy raycon.com forward slash drinking bros 
Um, that's by raycon.com forward slash drinking bros. Best headphones in the biz, man. Uh, wireless. Uh, the new ones now are, are, they work for six hours, yeah. um, which is amazing <laughs> and rechargeable. Get you Look, we wear these all the goddamn time. Um, they're amazing. They're affordable. We bitched about having an affordable headphone company on this uh, show for a long time. They stepped up to the plate. Uh, if you go to buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros, um, you get 15% off, which knocks these things down to like 65 bucks. And, uh, and they're amazing. Um, some people ask me why the new ones went up like five bucks or whatever. It's because they're lasting longer. Yeah, they the, got the cases better are better. I mean, it's yep. fucking rad. They, the case is also smaller too. I know they're, they're, they're one of those companies is really trying to improve their product and they're already great. Um, before, you know, this whole pandemic happened, you saw, you see everybody wearing these in public at the airports and all that shit. This is the company. It is by Raycon.com forward slash drinking bros, 15% off. And, uh, uh, they're worth every fucking penny for these goddamn things. Big, big fan of them. Uh, Jamie, why don't you patch in uh, Jerry on the uh, on the used to, on the FaceTime, if you will. Uh, let's let's listen to uh, Jerry Wayne. Jerry. Welcome to Drinking Bros Podcast. D'Anthony. Yep. We got a special guest on the show today. Special in that he's not uh, the normal guest. Not special as in special, special. Right, right, like right, he, right. You can clearly see he's not wearing a helmet. No, he's not he, <laughs> uh, He's not a retard, obviously. Yeah, right. Okay, um, got it. I'm we, just making sure because I'm not allowed around him. The, the wild thing about Drinking Bros Podcast is oftentimes we talk about guests and then they're on the show a week later. Uh, Jerry Wayne. You are one of those people, my man. Welcome to Drinking Bros Podcast. Thanks for having me. A pleasure. Hell yeah. Fuck, it's it's our pleasure, dude. Um, you went viral, what, about 10 days ago, 10, 14 days ago, when you were yeah, uh, minute, yeah. talking shit to Joe Biden. Um, where Was that Detroit, Michigan? Were you in, are you, do you work in an auto plant, or were you in one for that specific uh, meet and greet? No, like the media portrayed me as being an auto worker. I'm not an auto worker. I'm a millwright by trade. And yeah, I was in Detroit. It was an FCA plant, like a Chrysler plant. And uh, but I travel all over the country working on all types of different stuff. So I was just there temporarily until we finished the job and then I jumped to the next one. Gotcha. Yeah, because you're right. Like the media did portray you as an auto worker. So that's that's what I thought you were. Yeah, <clears throat> definitely not the, not an auto worker for sure. I'm a millwright man. I'm a skilled tradesman. And uh, that's not the typical type of union worker you think of. You know, the guys that just can do a whole bunch of nothing and keep working. That's, that's not the type of union I'm in. If you're not good at what you do, you don't work. Yeah. Well, that's what, uh, that's what Dan's favorite porn star used to say. Yeah. If you're not good at what you do, <laughs> you don't work. Yeah. You know? he, she would starfish a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Starfish is where you just lie down and take it. There's no movement. And that's when they get <laughs> you out of there. Five limbs and yep. your head just like out. You just you take yeah. it like a champ. Yeah. yeah wow. You have to. <laughs> Are you <laughs> drinking a Corona during this? Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> when you asked, hey, man, is it okay to drink on the show? You guys are drinking, bro. We said, yeah, of course. The yeah. fact that you just <laughs> pulled up a corona during the coronavirus is the ultimate flex. Was that on purpose or no? Uh, it was completely unintentional, but if I, if you guys want, I'll say it was. Then yeah, sure. Yeah, look, I, I love <laughs> it's it. All well, I've, it's all I've got right now. I could go for a Budweiser right now, but this is what I got. They're sold out of Budweiser. He's the angling store. for a sponsorship now. Yeah, you're goddamn oh, right. Dude, I don't blame you, dude. <laughs> I don't blame you either. Yeah, you need a Bud Heavy. And look, let's face it, Corona could use all the sponsorship they need during this crisis. That just goes to show you, like Americans believe the dumbest shit. Oh yeah. Like yeah. this, that whole thing where Russia, Russian bots influence the election. We always go back to that. Mm -hmm. If you're dumb enough to get fooled by a Facebook ad, you're probably dumb enough to think that Corona beer can give you coronavirus. Yeah, like those are the same people. Same, people. the same group of people for sure. Thirty-eight percent. I just saw this dude licking Americans. a toilet, man. Oh this, yeah, this guy just came out licking a toilet, saying it's coronavirus challenge, and and he seemed to be a little bit on that feminine side. Oh uh, yeah, so, well, feminine spectrum, whatever, whatever you want to say. Spectrum. I don't think that's it. Now, for to go back to your comment earlier. Um, you were talking about the about Dan Schiff's, about being my new TV uh, idea uh, about being special. Oh, uh, okay, so you yeah. should have probably said spectrum on that spectrum. Yeah, yeah. Feminine is, is the proper word you use for that. Um, and then Dan, by the way, since you talked about it, our co-host Dan, sp speaking of Michigan, because you were there. Dan wants to do a show, uh, just a two minute show called Dan Shits, yep. where he's just shitting in different bodies of water all over the world. And he wants I'd to start it. with Lake Michigan. So you, you would watch it. All right. <laughs> Look, of course he fucking would. That's entertainment. Dude. He just walked in, and I, I wanted to make sure you would you would watch because I was like, man, that's – I don't even want to hear it's about that It's just a quick two-minute – you know those guys that do the one-minute interview and it's just chaos? Yeah. But for me, I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to take a full two minutes. Yeah. I'm going to talk about the scenery a little bit, and then I'm going to shit in it. Okay. A little bit of slow motion action on it, too. Oh, That'd yeah. Right. The oh. slow motion is me walking, so I walk towards each body of water. It's like that. Uh, but he's about 200 <laughs> yards away, so it's going to yeah. be a really wide angle. It's like, oh, there you go. It's yeah. like Kitchen Nightmares or whatever with Gordon Ramsay where that he does the scene where he's putting on his chef shirt mm -hmm. at the beginning. That's my beginning of the <laughs> show. Yeah. It's me pulling my pants down and walking out into the water. Yeah, yeah, of course. In slow motion. <laughs> Obviously. With some kind of inspirational music, probably some kind of 80s power ballad. If or I had Enya, and it's something inspirational. If there's somebody that's died in that area recently and I'm going to shit in their honor, then mm -hmm. yeah, we'll play Enya. Okay. Otherwise, I don't want to fucking dramatize it too much. It's more of an upbeat. It's, it's supposed to make people happy, but sometimes even when you're trying to make people happy, you have to be sad a little bit. Actually, current research shows sure. that intentionally listening to sad music to make yourself sad when you're sad makes you happier. Right. I, I don't know if that's the truth or not. It is. Um, but we thought we would drag you into whether or not you liked uh, Dan Shit's idea for a, for a nice two minute show. So if the verdict is yes, then we can move on. While you're, <laughs> it seems interesting. <laughs> while you're really here, is uh, you, you were the one who stood up to Joe Biden. Uh, you got in his face and you said, hey, man, I want to know about my 2A <laughs> rights. Um, describe why you decided to go out there in the first place? Well, for just a short answer is because I'm an American. That's why. There it is. And, I think uh, you're supposed to say I'm a goddamn American. If yeah, you're goddamn I'm American. a goddamn American. I'm a goddamn American. American. Yeah. That's what I'll say. I'm a goddamn American. <laughs> I did right there. Even his voice got a little more <laughs> southern when I, I, yeah. he said that. You're... Yeah, yeah I, well, I'm, my, I've got southern roots, man. Oh, yeah? Uh, well, my, my grandfather, my grandmother, <laughs> yeah. So I kind of I, I get a little bit in there sometimes, but. Yeah, you know, like I don't have a lot of opportunities to ask political figures questions, and I saw it, man. I wasn't about to pass that up. And some people would try talking me out of it, but I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror if I didn't try. I tell you that. Yeah. So, so let me ask you this: Were you working in there that day, or did you go there intentionally and say, "Hey, man, I'm going to try to ask him a question"? Oh no, I was working there. It's just my everyday job, man. They came in there at seven o'clock that morning and said, "Hey, Joe Biden's going to be here in about two and a half hours." He was late, you know, obviously. Yeah. And. uh and I, I just I spent a little bit of time getting my question together. I kept I kept uh, just doing drafts, sending them to my girlfriend. You know, she's getting all these random texts like, "What the heck's going on?" You know, because I wanted to be uh, articulate. I, I I wanted to I, I did it for myself. You know, but I I figured we were always representing the the working man. You know, so I wanted to go over there and not sound like a complete idiot. Yeah, and I think that was what was most impressive and probably why it went viral is the thoughtfulness behind your question and your answers. Um, and clearly he was, he was getting flustered. I mean, look, uh, he said AR 14s, which is, is <coughs> look, Dan, you're military. That's not a gun that exists in this world. Is it? AR doesn't sound for a assault rifle, by the way, it stands for armor light. Okay. Right. So, but an AR 14 is uh, not a thing, not a thing. And okay. AR 14. Nope. 
Nope. nope. No, still M not a thing. An M14 is a thing. Okay. It's a lovely, lovely rifle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One yeah. of the best. Um, Tremendous rifle. <laughs> and, and then he asked you at one point to step outside. Oh, yeah. I, I, from what I hear, I, didn't, I was kind of caught up in the moment. I, I was really trying to push the envelope mm -hmm. with it. But he said that something along the lines of, like, step outside and I'll slap you in the face or something, you know? And, yeah. Uh, I, I kind of went around that. I wasn't trying to uh, to bite on that. I think he was trying to give me some bait to bite on. But uh, he was digging his own hole, man. I was just letting him dig it. Was it one of those situations where you have to weigh it in your mind of, like, because whenever somebody says that to me, I'm like, fuck it. Let's go. Like, I'm, I'm let's, let's go outside. I'm, I'm fine with that. Did you ever yeah. envision yourself just trying to beat the shit out of Joe Biden? No comment. Really? <clears throat> yeah, he's still under I, the protection of Secret Service. I don't know if you can really make definitive comments like that. Although, well, no, but had if, Joe if you're Biden called out, like it, that's a different story. You can't respond to calling out unless he makes a f like. He has to make for it to be a misdemeanor of assault. He has to make a specific comment about something he can actually carry out. For example, uh -huh. he would have to say, "I'm going to." punch you in the face with my fist he couldn't say i'm gonna stab you or hit you in the head with an axe if he doesn't have an axe that's not a crime because it's theoretical still right so for it to for him to be able to respond in that kind of way to a guy who has secret service protection he probably would have had to take a poke at him first well here's the odd thing when i watched the video it didn't look like it, they were secret service around him it looked like he was it was just him is that true i or? don't know who was who was around like because yeah i'll be honest with you, man there's there's so many people around there i don't know who's who and you know how big they dress to be a part of the group and stuff sure. like that so i mean be it as it may i'm still not gonna hit an old man you know, like he, he did step up on me, put his finger in my face. And I, I, I think I was pretty, uh, I, I drew a line, you know, but tell him like, this is not okay. No matter what type of political figure you are, you don't step up on a grown man like that. You don't step up on an American citizen like that. And uh, it, it didn't escalate from there, but I think I, I think I laid it down to let him know not to let that escalate. Man, how funny would it have been if he had bit Biden's finger? Oh man, we've been great. The way Biden bit at his wife's finger. Some people were wanting me to suck on it and stuff. <laughs> Sniffed his hair. <laughs> Sniffed his make hair. Make him feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Like comb his hair behind his ear a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah. come great. on, Joe, calm down, buddy. Blowing his ear. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. So are we safe? Are we safe to assume that you're a Republican? I would imagine. Um, I, I like to tread right down the middle of that line, man. I'm not right. I'm not left. I'm just an American guy that, that loves his constitution. I like that. So. Good. I, I like that. So, so, so you're down the middle. So in this election that's coming up, obviously it's it's Biden versus Trump. Um, because of what Biden said to you, is that would that influence your opinion of obviously no. voting for him or not voting for him? What, what Biden said to me doesn't influence, influence me either way because when it comes down to it, we're all men, mm -hmm. and, and men have discussions, and sometimes they do get heated, and that's perfectly fine. What, what I'm more leaning towards the fact that he wants to take away my rights, not only my rights, the American people's rights, and that's an attack on, the, on America in itself, and right there is what I'm standing up against. I know he was trying to make a point, but he didn't do it very well. The point he was trying to make is that when he said you can't have any gun, and again, I don't, I don't know how much you remember the conversation because it did get a little heated, but... Uh, he's right insofar as the go like the Supreme Court has decided that they can limit what types of guns you can and can't own, right? Uh, like a machine yes. gun, for example, or a rocket launcher, or a fucking tank, a goddamn, right. uh, um, uh, I don't know. You, you can't own some things. And mm -hmm. Scalia actually wrote the opinion on that. He's yeah. the rightest dude of all time. But the, the flip side of that, and this is what infuriates me about this whole discussion that we're still having, there was a 10-year assault weapons ban. And since then... There's been 15 years of study on that ban, and everybody, including Pew, everybody has decided that the assault weapons ban had literally no effect on gun crime. Like, zero effect. So what was the point? Like, if the, the point of good legislation is that it's clear, concise, and enforceable, and that it does the job that it says it's going to do. Those are the four points of a good piece of legislation, and that one didn't do any of it. Like, it literally accomplished nothing except for to... I don't know, get people to buy a bunch of assault rifles after the ban was over. That's yeah. all it really That's right. accomplished. Yeah. So what the <laughs> fuck is the point of that? And they're still pushing that same narrative. It's like some asshole that tried something 20 years ago. And they're like, no, man, you, they just didn't do it. It's like the fucking socialism argument. No, no, yeah. one's, no one's ever done it right, man. That's the problem. Just shut the <laughs> fuck up. That's another thing. I'll be fuck. damned if we sit here and just let America be a petri dish. You can let one of these other companies, other, other countries do that, man. Yeah, fuck we're, that. We're the cream of the crop. They yeah. can try it out.
Yeah, I will say this, though. Again, it is refreshing to hear that you were completely down the middle and just weren't going, you know, just to be an asshole. Because you see some of these things. I just finished watching that Hillary doc on Hulu. Uh, I want to point out that it was out of pure boredom, and I'm at the end of my fucking queue uh, with the quarantine shit. Like, So I'm down to this and uh, Tiger King on, on Netflix, and then I'm done with probably TV shows on all of my apps at this point, uh, as are most Americans. And... You know, when I watched the, the Hillary doc, uh, with how, how little security there was and all this other shit and how slanted it was, a, a lot of people in that doc were showing up just to say fuck you and then leave. And you were like, why were you there in the first place? So it's nice to hear that you were genuinely there to ask a question, you know, um, you know, obviously you were working there, but you were just genuinely there when Biden came in to say, hey, man, I want to ask your opinion on this. Get it. And then that'll inform my decision on who to vote for versus people just showing up at an event just to fuck with people and then leave and say, all right, I got my fucking, you know, I got them. I got my two cents in. A lot of people show up just just to make a wave or something like that. But those people that show up to do that stuff, they've already drawn the conclusion inside of their head. You know, and, and don't get wrong, it's okay to draw some conclusions, but you have to be able to listen to the opposition at the same time. Yes. You know, maybe A, you can learn something, but at, at the very least, you'll learn something about your enemy, mm-hmm. you know? So so therefore, it will make your your stance even that much stronger. And that that's that's the motion I came into mm-hmm. that with, you know? Like, yeah, we're both going to benefit from this. Yeah. In well, some you way, can't, shape or form. E- even as the, uh, even as from Biden's side of the, of the table, and uh, granted, he probably doesn't think like this, but... You can't expose. This is why I think everybody should be talking to each other because you can't expose bad ideology without having conversations about it. You know what I mean? Like if you think you you might think something that's super stupid, but you don't know that it's stupid. Right. And we've all had that experience. Mm -hmm. And then finally you it clicks and you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. You ever been in the middle of an argument three quarters of the way through and you realize that you're fucking stupid? Oh, yeah. But you keep like, going with God it. God yeah, yeah, damn yeah. it. <laughs> and you, you just got to end it. And then usually it's like, yeah, well. I'll, I'll get back to you later on that one, you know? And yeah. it's a lot of pointing. Yeah, what, and, Mom? Coming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> meatloaf! Mom! I gotta, she's, she's not getting the meatloaf. Mm-hmm. She's not yeah. getting the fucking meatloaf. Do you like meatloaf with ketchup on top of it? How do you like your meatloaf? Uh, so, usually a tomato sauce. Tomato sauce? Yeah, tomato but not just ketchup. No, not ketchup. Definitely what not. What about you? Uh, I, I'm, I, my meatloaf life hasn't been that great, so definitely ketchup. I'm more of a steak guy. Mm. But, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, a meatloaf with ketchup, sure. I, yeah. My mom has been the only one who's made decent meatloaf in my life. I've never had it anywhere else. And, and it was, was like, a red sauce. It wasn't it was like good. brown gravy. No, or it was a tomato sauce. Mm. Tomato sauce. For I sure. think the contrast with the vinegar and the and the and the ketchup or red sauce is probably what brings it out a little bit. Maybe, maybe it's a very American dish. Nobody, yeah. nowhere else would they think to. Hey, we've got bread, right? Why don't we make it out of meat? Yeah, only America <laughs> would do that. Of course, of course. Oh, that's right. Um, so are you going to vote for uh, – have you made up your mind who you're going to vote for in the, the upcoming election? Uh, with all due respect, I'm going to keep that private right now. The type of motion I'm trying to push right now is not left or right. I'm trying to bring America together, you know, within some of the platform that I have. And, and I think that's important that people can make up their individual minds. That's great, actually. I, you know, it's, I, ne- I never hear – like, I'm shocked. I never fucking hear this out of people. And it's like, hey, man, this is the way it should be in America. Keep an open mind with everything. See how everything goes. And then when you get there, you get there. Like, on this show, we say all the time. Thank you. We don't really give a shit who anybody votes for. The beauty of living in America is that it is a democracy, and you get to choose. Watching that video, one would have thought something totally different about you. And now I don't like I, I thought for sure you were a plant and you showed up and we're just like, fuck you. I'm going to get my point in for Trump and then leave. And then uh, it's refreshing to hear that after what went on. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that, man. That, that's not who I am. I just I'm in America, you know, and these things would be going a little different uh, seeing that somebody's not going after our rights, you know. But the way I look at it is that we're under attack right now. This is actually happening. And, and people, the patriots, we need to step up and actually we need to move. Uh, re- repeat that last part for me. I'm sorry, it cut out a little bit. Probably from the. Oh, uh, sorry about that. No, um, no, no. It's 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 probably from the sweet sweet internet that we're getting all quarantined here in all all our states. <laughs> oh right. Yeah, I just um I I, I I forgot what that question even was right now. Um oh I, I just I want I want Americans to be able to stand up for what they believe in. You know that that that's my motive here. And and to listen to the opposition become a there's a lot of patriots that are just laying dormant right now, ready to come up and and fight, but. 
the, the fight in arms isn't here yet. Uh, who knows when that may be, but right now we need to do this fight with, with compassion and love and actually and t- talk to people, talk to the opposition and, and let them understand where we're coming from here. Mm, That's how right. we're going to win, you know, win this, this battle on our rights. You know? Well, I think a lot of people are in a weird spot, and you're obviously one of them, myself included, where I look at both of these political parties and I don't have a whole lot in common with either one of them. You know what I mean? Like, there's a couple of things I agree with from both sides of the fence, but if you show it, let, let, let's just say it's a sporting event, mm-hmm. one-on-one, five-on-five, 11 on 11 whatever the case is, or it's, uh, you know, like a fight in a playground, whatever it is, there's a reason to choose sides. I don't have a reason to choose either one of these sides right now, to be frank. Bingo. Uh, and I don't th- – it's, it's, it's interesting you say that because all of us that are out there right now are trying to find a way to be – I don't know if politically active is the right word, but to be to have to do meaningful things without attaching ourselves to one of these two parties, because I'm not comfortable with that because they, they, they both do shit that I'm not comfortable with. Well, it's it's to <clears> me, it's not the party. It's the person. So, like, I, I, I have no problem telling you I'm voting for Trump in the upcoming election in November. And uh, I was I voted in 2016 for Trump, um, partially because I wanted to see somebody that was a non politician come in there and try to blow up the system. The economy was, before this pandemic started, was going great. Everything was fucking cruising. And besides him tweeting, like there's there's a few things that I don't like about him with with, with tweeting and some of the speeches and shit like that. But besides that, the account, this is the most my friends have ever worked in their entire lives. Um, but I'm also able to see the other side of someone where you take your 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 instance uh, with Joe Biden, I love the fact that Joe Biden said, do you want to go outside? That's some old man shit that like, that is clearly in you. The dude called me a horse's ass. Yeah. That's some serious old man shit. (laughs) Exactly. And it's like, I also like a guy like that who's not afraid to be like, you know what, man? I think you're, because it looked to me from the video that he was just like, man, I think this guy's fucking with me. Do you want to go outside and you're a horse's ass or a piece of shit or whatever else he calls you? And it was just like. I like to see a little bit of feistiness in the mm. candidates, and that's what I liked about Trump when he was running in 2016. I didn't mind that out of Biden in this. Like, fuck. I, again, I'm not voting for him, but watching your video that went viral, I was like, eh, all right, good for Joe. Like, he's not afraid to fucking rip some young man out of here, and you know, if he thinks he's being a cocksucker. Yeah, part of me wonders if that's uh, him being genuine and he's like that. Or if that's scripted because he's talking to blue collar people, you know what I mean? I don't. Like I don't you think should, you so. Should, you should talk shit to them because I don't think for any amount of time that that this is a big fucking deal, mm-hmm. like hot mic thing during the Affordable Care Act vote. I don't think that was that was definitely on purpose. I also think that him saying that uh, marriage equality should be a thing. I don't think that was an accident. I think he did that on purpose as well. I think he's very. Co- he's this guy is 78 years old. Yes. And he's been a congressman, senator, vice president, or post vice presidency for now a couple of years. 47 since was, years. Since he was 29 years old. Yeah. 72, That's, I believe it was. Yeah. Yeah. He, I mean, come on, man. Yeah. This guy knows exactly what the fuck he's doing. Yeah, look, he's, he's been in office for 47 years at this point. You were in the middle of it. Did you think he was genuine, or did it seem like a scripted moment to say, hey, man, why don't we go outside? I, I, think, he, I think he was completely blindsided with what happened. So that's what I, think I he felt went, like he watching the video. Just to, yeah. Yeah. He'd, he'd showed up to be like, Hey, I'm here. Give me your vote. See you later. And I don't think he was, it wasn't expecting to have a, a question. And I kind of caught him off guard with that. And I think that his true color showed, but I think his true color showed the fact that he didn't know what to say exactly. What? So that's, that's what he goes to, you know, he yeah, goes yeah. to belittling yeah. people, yeah. you know, and that, that right there <laughs> makes me feel like that he's not a good, um, a presidential candidate. So he That's just how, answered he, your question then. He's not voting for Biden. Well, no, I mean, look, Anyways, Trump belittles <laughs> people too. Oh, yeah, so every I, single day. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's just China. guys in general. Um, yeah, we talk shit. We, we talk shit all the time. I, I, there was a different restraint back, you know, before the 2016 election, but I think now with social media yeah, and everything that, ramped up, like, you want to see more realness in candidates? That is unique to the United States, though. Go to the British Parliament mm-hmm. and tell me that they're fucking civil over there. They fucking light each other up all the oh, time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go to fucking Japan. They've yeah. been in fist fights on the fucking Congress yeah. floor over there. Yeah. Like, th- this is... Well, I, the whole pretense, the Robert's Rules of Order is bullshit. Like, uh, excuse me, <coughs> these rules that were written 6,000 years ago say that you can't say this right now. How about you get fucked, old man? Yeah. I say what the fuck I want. <laughs> you gotta wear a, a, a shirt and tie on the fucking Congress floor. Well, Jared Taylor didn't. He wore fucking camo pants and a t-shirt, bitch. Yeah called drink it bros you may have heard of it yeah 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 
Um, but 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 for you, Jerry, like you know, when you were out there, I me personally, I would love to see more people like you talking to our candidates rather than f fuck you or fuck you or fuck you. Oh, yeah, like yeah. bring up a point, have something to say about it, and say it in a thoughtful, well thought out. Um, you know, way right. and don't yeah. be the, don't be the aggressor. You know, because you just you make your the party that you're representing look that much worse. Yeah, you yeah. Know, if people are able to actually take some time and articulate something. I think we, us as a country could move forward on a lot of things. I think that uh, Biden and a lot of Democrats that were part of the Obama administration are still butthurt that they aren't beloved by the auto industry because of the bailout. Like that that bailout didn't affect the workers the same way it did the companies mm -hmm. and that happens a lot actually that's why uh, the democrats are saying they didn't vote to pass this procedural part of the coronavirus bill right is because it benefited companies more than people and that is often the case sure and i think yeah, we had to take a 10 percent cut on that yeah on your pensions on everything like they the fucking auto workers lost so much on their pension uh during that bailout um and uh, the companies didn't lose shit, by the way. So it's, I think that the, I think Biden and a lot of other people in the Democratic Party right now are, are like offended and butthurt that the auto worker industry isn't just with them blindly now. Like, right. Hey, we fucking saved you guys, man. What are you doing? Like, yeah. Well, yeah. kind of. Yeah, kind of. I mean, we're, we're fucking, and we, we're, we're not only are we not keeping up with inflation, we actually lost 10%. Yeah. So it's like, come on, man. Uh, but they don't see it that way. It's like, uh, <clears throat> when you take a holier than thou attitude, when you're so convinced of your own rightness that you can't listen to anybody else, that is the kind of fucking mindset that it breeds. Like it's it's the same thing that leads to any other radical form of anything, like radical Islam, for example. Like they they believe so much that they're correct that they'll fucking blow themselves up and kill people to prove that. Yeah. And that's just like we obviously it's not that extreme in American politics yet, but it's the same mental state. And it's not unique to Democrats either. It's no. on both sides. Yeah, of course, of course. Yes. Um, I think the when, reason you, when you draw a conclusion, you stop your growth as a human being. You can't just draw conclusions all the time. You have to be willing to listen to opposition at all times. Yeah, I, I, I agree. But it seems like ninety-seven percent of the country has stopped doing that. Like well, Chris, I will always listen to anybody. And after Chris Rock made that lovely speech in uh, Dogma about how we don't really like beliefs, we like ideas because ideas can change, right? Yeah. Kevin yeah. Kevin Smith's a pretty good. I writer. like that. Yeah. He's okay. He's not bad. Go watch Dogma. It's a great movie. Uh, oh, I've seen Dogma for sure. I just didn't, didn't recall that line, but I, I love Dogma. The Jay and Son <laughs> Bob reboot just came out, too. I know. I we did. haven't watched it yet. I did. Our, our other co-host, uh, Jared Taylor, asked me that every day if I've watched it yet. No, I, I have not, Jared. It I, yeah, I it's, haven't. It's on. It, look, it's out, and you can rent it now. I think it's on Netflix. No, it's on, it's on like uh, Amazon Prime for free. Uh, oh, is it really? Yeah. Shit, I'll watch that tonight, yeah. then. Um, after or is I it, finish the Tiger I think it's King. on Prime, or is it Netflix? Maybe. Check it out. I think, Jerry, the reason why everybody identified with you in that video is you are the every Every man, would you say? Like, you are the the fucking ultimate blue collar just a worker. Guy. Yeah, I'm right? just a guy, man. Yeah, that's He's it. Joe but, the plumber. You know, Remember Joe the plumber? Yeah, you're you're kind of the Joe the plumber of this election so far. I I I, I wouldn't say I'm a Joe the plumber guy. You know, I'm not trying to just go right or left with it. You know, I'm just I, I'm more of a guy that wants to unify things. You know, look look at the spectrum that we're working with now, guys. You got the le really far left. You got the really far right, and we're pulled so far apart right now that. The parties are leaving the people. The people aren't leaving the parties. Mm -hmm. You know, so so we have to gain our demographic back somewhere right in the middle. You know, something's falling apart. And it's not yeah. okay. People in the near right and near left are both afraid that either the far left or the far right are going to take over. So they vote for their side far. Like if you're a if yeah. you're a near right person or an it's a very good way person, to put it. Yes. Yeah. you fucking vote for far right people to keep far left people because they're so far removed from your ideology. Even though you don't agree with far right people, it is toxic as fuck. Yeah. And yep. it's like we're spiraling right now as a country. Forget all this coronavirus shit. We'll figure this out in a couple of weeks. But the way we talk to each other about stuff and the way we fucking treat each other as different ideas, we're fucked right now. Yeah. And yeah. it's only going to get worse because like the middle doesn't have a real reason to stand up and they don't have a platform. Like there's not big money behind centrist politics. You know what I mean? Like there's no Koch brothers that's gonna, that are going to fund like center right people. No, they they fund far right people that think corporations should be able to spend unlimited amounts of money in elections. That's who they fund. Right. And they've been doing it for fucking years. They've they've been trying to bust unions for years, all this other stuff. Look, it'll change someday. And then not, Soros not, not today. has been doing it on the opposite end. Correct. Spending for billions of yeah. dollars. Yeah. So it's like fuck, man. Yeah. Who who's gonna who's a fucking centrist uh, uh billionaire? I mean Bloomberg kind of. 
Kind of, but he decided to run Democrat, although he was a Republican. He did that because he Bernie run, Sanders did it. Yeah, he could have run independent if he wanted <clears> to, but he didn't. Yeah. Um, if Biden called you today and said, hey, man, why don't you come on down to my next t- town hall to watch me speak? Would you accept the invitation? To do watch him speak? Yeah, or, and chat no, with I him? I can watch it on TV, man. At this coronavirus thing, I'm, I'm trying to take it seriously. That's what our president's doing, so I'm going to follow our lead of our president. But hypothetical, the coronavirus didn't exist. The world goes back to normal for the, the, the conventions, right? I'll watch it on TV. <laughs> so you have no if desire. If he wants to ha- invite me down there to have a dialogue with him, I'd be more than happy. That's what I'm saying. So if he said, yeah, hey, man. Dialogue, absolutely. I'll show up. Sure. Come on down, and I'd love to chat with you about everything else we, we didn't get to finish uh when i was there you'd be open to that yeah absolutely yeah. What, what about uh a two-part well three-part meeting one's a dialogue like a town hall style dialogue second part right freestyle rap battle why not <laughs> third part is boxing match mm. yeah yeah yeah, for sure in that order because you're not going to feel like talking first? Okay, okay. which one's first all right yeah the, the <laughs> speech the 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 dialogue first gotta get the talking out of the way with biden sign me up man let's do it yeah Yeah. or i mean like and i feel like the the town hall part of it would give you fuel for the freestyle rap battle you could be writing lines the whole time that you're doing it oh that's right so let's get that done and i'd like to have a way in too um you know with with the two guys like height reach all that other stuff biden doesn't make weight for the fight yeah biden doesn't make weight so he has to take all his shit off and they're holding a towel in front of him yeah old school (laughs) old school that that, that's how we like a a wet biden a wet loose biden at the at the weigh-in yeah get them all sprayed up so what are you doing now jerry um right now i'm enjoying a beer with you guys now um yeah so I, uh, I got a few things going on now, man. A couple of organizations reached out to me, and I think they like uh, what I'm saying. And there's a lot of American people that are getting behind me, too. And uh, they want me to, to go out and spread this word. And uh, that, that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, I don't know exactly what's happening per se exactly, but I'm going to be doing some live speeches coming up, depending on this coronavirus. That's and, cool. Uh, we're we're going to move this forward. I'm just I'm trying to get some people to stand up. You know, it's, it's not just me that needs to do this. All the American people need to stand up for what they believe in. And not apologize for it once they say it. Sure. So do you do you currently live in Michigan? Yes, sir. Okay. And the reason I ask is any thought for running for office there? Um, I am giving it some thought. This is, has, has been quite a whirlwind of about a week and a half, you know. It's, I'm sure. I'm still trying to catch up on interviews, obviously. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, I, I do have people wanting me to run for uh, Congress, believe it or not. Yes. So I think I think what which actually it saddens me a little bit, you know, the fact that we have come so far disconnected to our political parties or to the people that are politicians in general, that we just want an average guy to 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 go up to say something, you know, that, that that's a major disconnect. And and I'm uh, I am talking to some people right now to see exactly what I'd be getting myself into, because I, I, I'm going to take this very seriously. But it's it's definitely not out of the question. Uh, yeah, it's great because, uh, you know, usually when something happens like this and especially the, the, the way you speak and how controlled you are in your, your thought process, like, you know, that, that's immediately what people want of like, hey, he should run. That's what everybody says. Well, he should run. Um, it's, it's cool that you're actually thinking about that. Here, I've got a couple of ideas. I think they should be constitutional amendments. One is term limits for Congress and Senate. That's the yes, first sir. thing. Yeah. The second thing is while you serve uh in Congress or anything like that, or you're on the staff of any of these people, you should not be allowed to be invested in the stock market at all. At yeah, because we're going. Well, look, we're like going that. through that now. There, what, four, there was four congressmen. Five, ooh, five now. Four Republicans and one Democrat. One Democrat. Yeah. yeah. So yep. it's five now. Yeah. Ugh, who pulled their no, money out they, of the stock market? The, the one. Di- the one uh, Democrat is Diane Feinstein, of course. Of course, because she's she and Pelosi have been fucking robbing the American taxpayer for years. Not just years. Them. Yeah. I mean, they're they're just. Two that happen to be doing it. There's Pelosi's million. husband as well. Yeah, he's he's fleeced. all of those people yeah. should be fired immediately <clears throat> and, and and jailed. Yeah, to me that is uh, that's light treason. Yeah, honestly, yeah. using using your security clearance and and your role in the government to make money on the backs of the American people, you should be fucking thrown in a ditch. Yeah, I could not agree more on that. And uh, that's another thing I'm pushing, guys. I'm pushing for that uh, the congressional term limits. Think about it. Us as Americans, I've never met a single American, left, right, or center. That does not want congressional term limits. The uh, fact is, the American only, people want it. Only yeah. people in Congress. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. People right. in Congress. So, well, so yeah. are they really working for us? You see what I'm saying? No, no. they're not. I mean, look, I, I looked at the numbers of how much they're making. Um, 
you make a goddamn great living to work 40 to 80 days a year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's pretty Bunch spectacular. Of days, vacation stuff. Yeah. yeah. yeah and uh, look, <laughs> to make that much money, of course, you're, you're going to want to do it for the next 50 years. I yeah. mean, it, Looking at it, that's about as much as a people don't high get, powered attorney. People makes. don't get to know their representatives or senators anymore. They just don't because that's the person who has dominated that area for a long time. Mm -hmm. They have the right letter next to the end of their name in parentheses, yep, that's right. so that's who I'm going to vote for. No, if there's a six year limit on Congress, you can run three times and you're done. Yeah. And there's a two time for the Senate, you can run for 12 years and you're done, right? Every so certain amount of time, you have to actually get to know these people and find out what they really believe. And the, the threshold to actually get in to be a congressperson is so much higher then. Because you can't just run on your name anymore. You have to run on what the fuck you just did. Right. And nobody yep. does that. I mean, look, you start campaigning as a congressperson six months after you fucking get elected, basically. Like, you get about six months of governing, and then the next 18 months is trying to get reelected. Yeah. They, they run every two years. People never get, like, imagine, uh, <clears throat> or think about some of these people like Pelosi who've been in Congress forever, or shit, name anybody. Uh, uh, Strom Thurmond was my biggest example, because he was in for, like, fucking 60 years. Yeah, for and he, he, in 1948, he He's ran, from your state, right? South yeah, Carolina. South Carolina yeah. Yeah. In 1948, he ran on the segregationist ticket <laughs> yeah. for president. Yeah. And uh, was still on up until, what, the 90s? Until he, was, until he was 93, yeah, so he, I don't know. He almost fucking died in yeah. office. It's, it's ridiculous. <clears throat> yeah, so it's like uh, we, we have to think of a better way to represent people. And I think the more people that go in and out. So one of the problems that both sides have and one of the reasons Trump got elected and one of the reasons that Bernie Sanders has been so popular is people are tired of the status quo. They don't want these fucking career politicians any, anymore that don't represent them. Correct. Yeah. And, you know, this would be a constitutional means of draining the swamp every couple of years. Yeah. Right. That's what American government is supposed to be. It was supposed to be a service. People would farmers and doctors and attorneys would leave their homes. They would go serve in Congress for a little while and then come back home and run their business. Yeah. And die. You know what I mean? But now, now they're in there forever. Yeah. The point of government has become to perpetuate itself, not to represent the people. And we're fucked right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a sweet time, but uh, we need more people like you out in the world. Uh, Jerry, now's the point in the show. Hey. We'll, we'll, go ahead. No, I just said thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, that. yeah, yeah, of course. Um, now's the point in the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week. That is somebody who's inspired you or helped you become the man you are today. Who would you like to give your drinking bro of the week to? Oh, right now? Yeah. Um, who's been most my, inspirational in your life right Joe now? Joe Biden, right? Is it the, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can only give one? Uh, no, you, got, you got two. This, you is, got Ameri this is America. Right. Do what you want. How, yeah. how, about, how about one that's my idol and one that's a companion, okay? Fire away. Uh, my <laughs> idol? Jordan Peterson, he's going through a rough time right now. I highly recommend that man, and uh, I would not be as articulate as I am today without him, or even be in the position I am in my life without him. I've been in some, I've been in some ups and downs, and he, he's an he's an author. He, he's a a great mind, one of the greatest minds that we have today. So, Mister uh, America over here goes with a Canadian out of the gate for his drinking bro. Yeah, Are you fucking kidding Come me? Come on, Hold on God man. damn it! I, I did, I did on National Puppy Day Canadian. of all days, now you're gonna switch and go Hulk Hogan <laughs> <laughs> or Jesse Ventura. Okay, no, no, no. The other one is actually uh, right here. This is more American for you. Well, my my girlfriend. How's that? Yeah, oh, yeah. there you yeah. go. What's, See, what's guys, I wouldn't even be I wouldn't even be on the show right now without her, man. I I am not tech savvy at all. You guys, I'm sure you figured it out by the time I called into the show. I didn't even know what I was doing with this Facetime stuff. Yeah, and. Uh, and, and she organizes everything, man. She, she makes sure that I'm on time with everything. And if I have to do anything with my social media, she because I'm not a social media guy. You know, I'm a construction guy. Sure. And she, she does everything, everything to help me out with that, man. This would not be possible without her. Good. That's well, awesome, you know, man. You know, today is uh, National Puppy Day, right? So you could reward your drinking bro of the week. With, with a, a puppy. puppy. You can get her a puppy. Do you guys have a dog? Oh, uh, we not do. I have a chocolate lab. She's my hunting dog. Oh, nice. All yeah. right. There right go. on. Right on. Well, uh, speaking of social media, where can everybody find you on social media? Oh, yeah. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Jerry Wayne AR 14 Not 15, 14. <laughs> so your Instagram has handle a good is ring to it, huh? Jerry Wayne AR 14 on Instagram? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. that's the best. That's the fuck, That's the best Instagram handle I've heard this week. That's, that's kind of catchy, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Thanks, Joe. Or, I, yeah, I didn't even want to say this week. It t today is it's Monday, for Christ's sakes. I feel like with this quarantine, it's been 30 years Although it's been like eight days, you know. Yeah, you you, you, just, you hit that on the head for sure, man. I mean, look, everybody's like so gung ho for twenty twenty and stuff too. And man, 
the, the world is is going through a rough stage right now. I'll tell you that. Boy, yeah. it, 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 fe- it feels like I mean, like I we were we were talking about the impeachment thing before we went on air. That was just a couple months ago. That feels like it was it was ten years ago. Doesn't man. it? Oh, it's so Doesn't nuts. It? Yeah, man. All right, so I got a question for you guys. Yeah. All right, so let's go back to 2015, 2016 when where we got the uh, the election going on. Let's say Trump is out. Yep. Let's just say there's another Republican uh, politician in there, mm-hmm. and let's say that Republican wins. Do you believe that our demographics would be as stretched as they are right now today? As far left and as far right? It's a good question. Yes, I do. Because I you think, I, I think. well, let, let's go back through. I've talked about this on the show before, so we can talk about a little recent history. First of yeah, all. I just, I just believe Trump's been outed on a lot of stuff, you know, but go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. I, I think it all started with Newt Gingrich in the mid-90s when he took the supermajority in 94 in the House and became speaker and, and just went fucking haywire. It was the it was a replay against Bill Clinton. On yeah, that against Clinton. Yeah. It was a it was a replay of the uh, the Southern strategy from Atwater back in the day that Nixon ran on, which is like super couched in racist bullshit, and it's it's a divide and conquer strategy, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> That's why Bill Clinton got impeached. It wasn't because he got his dick sucked in the Oval Office. No one cares about that shit. That that is a common occurrence. In, in D.C., fucking Jesus Christ. Oh, every, yeah. every couple of years, there's Jesus. a new thing that comes out, like, Mistress named 80 people in Congress. Yeah. And, well, there's only, like, 400 and fucking 35 of them. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good percentage. Uh, so I think it started with him. Um, I think the blame Bush crowd in the mid-'90s ramped it up quite a bit. Like, in, around 2004, 2005 time period, right before mm-hmm. he got reelected and then right after he got reelected, it was like, holy shit. Everything he like, oh, there's a tornado coming, fucking Bush, yeah. fucking FEMA, like Jesus Christ, dude, and it's just been vitriolic ever since. And I, the the right towards Obama was pretty, they were pretty rough on him too. I mean, look, he was a pussy and he did some stupid shit, but it's a president. Yeah. So for me, so you're saying yes. I, I'm gonna say no, and I'll tell you why. Uh, of who, like, I'm looking at the candidates right now. So we had Trump, who obviously won. Uh, Ted Cruz was in that. Uh, yeah, ben Carson was there. I, yeah, I would have said Ted Cruz. Yes, he's it still would have been this divided. Marco Rubio, I say no. Um, Jeb Bush, maybe I say no on Marco Rubio. John Kasich, I say no. Ben Carson, yeah, it would have been like a he's Ford a wild situation. Card. He's yeah, a wild card. Would have been yeah. like it's a, very weird. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he doesn't have any business being in front of cameras uh, and shit. Rand Paul, who has coronavirus, now. coronavirus yeah. now, um, and uh, oh, Mike Huckabee. Yeah, these are some terrible Mike candidates. Huckabee is a religious zealot. That's if, all he is. Yeah, if you look at these candidates, can, and then the last one was Jeb Bush. Now, I don't know if you remember back then, but before that election started, um, it was like the Democratic primary here. Like b- before the Democratic primary started this year, Kamala Harris was the favorite, right? When you everybody entered the field. Now, back in 2016 for the Republicans, Jeb Bush was actually the favorite, if you remember He correctly. checked all the boxes from a good, quote-unquote, mm-hmm. good family, but he had no... There, there was nothing. He wasn't a fucking slumlord at some point or any of that bullshit. He had a very successful business career, and then he yep. became a successful politician. He had a Latino wife and Latino, Latino children. Out of Florida. Out of Florida, like he, that, which is a huge fucking state to win if you're a Republican. Yeah. So he, had, he checked all the boxes. It turns out he's just kind of a, a – he's not a shark. He's a goofy dude. On yeah. camera and in debates and stuff, he just couldn't handle that part of it. No, and he got eaten alive by Trump. I mean, yeah. Trump crushed him. And uh, he, look, he ended up with four delegates total. <laughs> that yeah. was Jeb Bush's total. Which is funny. Trump's a showman, man. He's made for TV, you know? He yeah, is. Yeah. And it's one of those things where, to me, it, it depends on the person. Where I think Trump is such an easy target for the media and for the left that the further and further you go with this... Um, you know, he almost allows it because he's essentially a caricature of of himself at at times when he's out, you know, flipping toilet paper to Puerto Rico and shit like that, that it allows the media to jump in on that because he is who he is. Um, now, personally, that's I wanted a non-politician in there um, <laughs> to, to kind of blow this up and break this cycle of shit that was going on in politics. So I'm fine with it. And again, I'm, I'm re-voting for him. But I think. In 20, like after this election, it's going to get ramped up even further for another four years. And unless you have somebody inspiring that comes along um, for the party itself, right? Like Obama in 2008, 
living in Los Angeles, like people were genuinely felt inspired by a candidate. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Jesus could have run as a Republican and would have lost. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, there uh, like, was no, he, there's no way he would have lost. There was nothing you could do to stop it. And anybody who was pissed mm -hmm. off that he won, go to, I, I encourage you to do what Jerry does. Go, go meet the candidates and go to this shit. Like, we try to go to the rallies and do all the stuff. So, like, I, I saw Obama and all that shit. And I knew it was going to happen. I knew he was going to win, and it probably wasn't going to be that close. I've seen Bill Clinton speak four or five times in person. And he's great. He's he, It's hard to argue with his uh, his his delivery. He's like, a great may, orator. Once you, once you meet him and talk to him for 10 minutes, you can understand why he got elected president. Yes, and same with Obama, right? <laughs> and, and And I think... Because again, I, me personally, I think 2020 is is all Trump, and it's pretty much locked down. Um, the only thing that I said th that he would lose on is if the economy crashed um, on his own, not during a pandemic. I don't care who is in office, Republican or Democrat. There is nothing you can do about this situation. The government was not prepared. We are not prepared for this. FEMA is not prepared for for what is going on in the world. You can have people blame each other uh, on party lines, but to me, that's unfair because no one is prepared. Or would we ever be? It would have just been, you know, oh, it's a waste of supplies. It's too many masks. Yeah. Who ordered this? Who spent all this money on hazmat suits? Um, it, it's a waste of time. So past this, this next election, because right, I think Trump is in 2024, I think both sides, Republican and Democrat, have got to find somebody different and inspiring like you found for, look, Whatever you want to say about Trump, he was inspiring in 2016. He wanted to drain the swamp and fucking fix everything. That's because America was sick and tired of the same thing over and over mm. and over, man. Mm. Just like what you said, they want somebody that's not a politician in there. Yeah, you know, that's what. That's why. That's why I raised that question. You know, if if it wasn't Trump and it was just a regular politician, would it be this bad? Would that Would that other president be as as attacked I don't, by media? I don't think it's this bad. I think that is a. I think it's a canard to be honest because. Trump, like you said, he makes himself a lightning rod for it, mm -hmm. and he doesn't follow procedures, so it makes people think that the discourse... Yeah, he uses Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it, makes, it makes people think that the discourse is worse now than it ha ever has been, but I don't believe that. I just think it's been bad behind closed doors. Like, if you remember correctly, Dick Cheney walking off the floor of Congress telling some dude to go fuck himself. Yeah. Like another sitting U.S. representative. Yeah, yeah. He's like, hey, why don't you go fuck yourself? And just kept walking. Yeah. Like, that was the vice president of the United States. I don't, none of this stuff's new. It's just out in public now. And that's one of the things Correct. Trump's done. And I don't know if it's good or bad. I don't know if it's good or bad that he's exposed politics for what they are, which is a bunch of sniping snakes. That's all they are. Yeah. And it's, it's, it makes you wonder. Like, so I think, uh, more so than politics in 2024, we may be looking at a, a character test, somebody who can have a civil discussion, somebody like, I don't know, Dan Crenshaw, for example. Uh, yeah. That doesn't care what side of the aisle you're on, he's going to have a civil discussion with you no matter what your beliefs are. I, I think somebody like that, and the left has got to come up with somebody like that. They've got to come up with somebody who isn't going to be talking about Trump the whole time. Mm-hmm. Who isn't going to be talking about Bush the whole time like fucking people were back in the day? Yeah, like they they, they have to find somebody that is positive. So I think uh, personally, I believe that if Trump weren't running this time, both sides would tr would probably I don't know I think it's too soon it's too close to a Trump presidency now, but I think in 2024 you will be correct that people will have to start coming back towards the middle group because everybody's going to be fatigued by all this bullshit. You know what I mean? Like and, the, and I think they, right. I think they will, <laughs> unless um, you know it's Don Jr. who gets in there. Which look, there's a lot of articles speculating that already. That if he were to run for the GOP nomination in 2024, he would win. And it's hard to argue against it. Uh, my only argument might be that it could be Ivanka and not him, um, just because of how much Jared Kushner does behind the scenes. But I don't know. I, Jared Kushner's got too many skeletons for Ivanka to run, in my opinion. Maybe. He's a slumlord, man. Come on, you well, can't. His, his father was in prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Jared, for... Jared Kushner is a slumlord. Yeah, come on. So let's be real. We'll see. But look, if you're able to overcome that or grabbing pussies and shit, you can overcome whatever you want. Yeah, but I in think today's politics. here's what here's what Trump really taught us. It's that cancel culture is only cancel culture because we accept it. Like he's done all this fucked up shit and continues to say fucked up shit, and people are like, "You should fucking resign. You don't belong in the president." He's like, "Wrong." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, and that's it. Yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't give some like, like eloquent fucking rebuttal. He's just like, nah, I'm not doing that. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. And I think that's the power of being a rich person, right? Because yeah. if you're, if you're, uh, like, if I were to run for president, for example, it would cost me about, I don't know, half a billion to one and a half billion dollars to get elected. 
right? Yes. That money's got to come from somewhere. Mm-hmm. So I've got to be sucking dicks all over the corporate world, all over the special interest world all the time to make that happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Trump doesn't have to do that. So no. he can say, get fucked. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't give a fuck about any of you assholes. And when somebody calls him a fucking an, a, a dick, you're, you're a racist. He's like, eh, no. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like that's, there's power that comes with money like that. And it's not the power that you think. It's not the power to buy and sell things. It's the power to not care what other people think, yeah. uh, which is, I think, important. That's why I don't think money belongs in politics. You should be able that's to right. be abjectly poor and still get elected. Or force everybody to run under, under the same dollar amounts. Um, that way, you know, you can't steamroll everybody. But then again, you look at Bloomberg and it didn't work, man. He had all the money in the world and it didn't work. You can be a shitty candidate and it's not going to work. Um, oh, they eat him alive, man. Oh, he didn't stand a chance. Yeah, I'm not saying he Elizabeth they Warren, him alive. Elizabeth Warren was the one who ended his fucking presidency. Yeah. It's any shots at it, I should say. It's because he's not a shark either, though. Like, if he was a shark, he would have waited and run as an independent, and he would have funded the campaign of a right-leaning independent as well. So there were four candidates. We can't go three. Everybody's always talking about uh, 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 a third-party candidate. Mm-hmm. We need, there has to be four, right? Who's the fourth? I don't know, but it has to be a Republican, a Democrat, an independent from both sides. Otherwise, it'll never work. Because yeah. people, just like with Ross Perot in 92... The, the independent on the fucking right side is going to siphon off votes from the Republican and then vice versa on the left side. It has to be equal. Four people yeah. running at once. Um, I, the, the last thing I'll say is uh, re- regarding that, sh- that 2016 election is, um, and I hate to go back to that Hillary doc, but they did interview her team on there and they said, what was it? Why couldn't you beat him? Why, why didn't you win? And they just said, we could not stop Trump sucking up the news cycle every single day. And they were like, looking back, you know, we tried every strategy. We thought about every strategy we possibly could, but he just fucking dominated the news cycle every day. And I I think that's part of the allure of Donald Trump for the media now is he is the biggest story. So in order to keep themselves in business, the CNNs and all this other shit, they have to keep talking shit about him all day long. But it, it detracts from their candidate. Where's Joe Biden been during this whole fucking quarantine thing? I oh, he's doing his own press releases, daily press releases now. I, so I, I, Have you seen I that? saw that starting today. Like, you don't know anything, Joe. You're not plugged into the government anymore. Yeah. Like, what is he? who the fuck is he talking to and about what? And I'm glad you brought that up. So before that, I had not seen Jackass. anything about him for two weeks, right? And then he's doing this little thing today. Yeah. It's <laughs> almost like his people pushed him out there and said, hey, man, you're invisible. All people want to talk about is either the pandemic or Trump. Yeah. <clears throat> it doesn't even seem like he's running anymore. And uh, it's strange, man. So it, you got to figure out a way to beat that news cycle somehow. But I don't know how that's done, to be honest with you. Well, it's almost oh, like apparently they got the best on it. So we'll see if they can figure it yeah. out. You know, it's almost yeah. like uh, Michigan trying to beat Ohio State in a college football game. Right? Ah, there it is. Are you a Michigan fan? Uh, Strike strikes, huh? Oh yeah, I'm a Michigan fan. Oh yeah, oh amazing blue baby. For I've been sure. saving that. Well, they're not that amazing. What's the overall record? Right? What's their overall record right now, man? I don't know. I'm pretty know. sure you guys are down. Oh, yeah, I think you guys are down a long way. Yeah. Oh, if you go back to the 1800s, yeah, absolutely. Um, so <laughs> oh, I, I, sure. I went. To, I graduated from Ohio State, by the way. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I did well. I'm I'm not the last <laughs> must, the last twenty years. Hard, man. <laughs> the last twenty years have been the greatest of all time. I think you have one win, and it was against our interim coach when our other one got fired. But uh, hey, I'll take it. Yeah, I know. I know you will. And I'll take Har- <laughs> it's, it's, Harbaugh it's as hard, coach. Man. I'll take Harbaugh as coach for the rest of my life. He's been the greatest thing that happened to Ohio State since Woody. You've Hayes. got something I, to say about that. Let's hear it. Come on. <laughs> I think that uh, we have options that we can explore. Mr. Okay. Mr. Diplomatic over here. Yeah, now you're diplomatic. Um, yeah, well, you're stuck with Harbaugh. We have a sports show on, on Tuesdays. You're stuck oh, gee, with really? Yeah, we do. Uh, it's it's I'll huge. I'll see you guys on Tuesday then. Yeah, exactly. Drinking <laughs> Bro Sports is huge. But, uh, yeah, you, I think you guys are stuck with Harbaugh. Like, there, there is no other. Yeah, that's what it looks like it's happening right now, man. I tell you Coach what, we, got, we can have our record be high all the time, but if we can't win the games we need to win, what's the point? Yeah, you know? and I, by the way, I feel the same way about Ohio State. If we don't win the national championship, I'm I, I'm pissed off about the year. Like I just don't care. Like when we when we lost to Clemson, everyone was like, "Oh, great, you still made the playoffs." I don't give a shit. Either win the mm. national championship or get the fuck out of my lawn. Um, well, you guys are bringing up Michigan. You guys know I'm a Lions fan, right? Ooh. Ooh. So you know what I'm saying. So I kind of like 
You're you used to losing. While I'm down here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Speaking yeah, of man. the NFL, did you see the uh, Rams' new logo and colors and stuff? No. It's so ugly. Uh, I can't wait. It's uh, not great. How do you feel about Darius Slay leaving? That's a hard one, man. Uh, he, he's get, he's getting older, man. But I tell you what, they, we, if we don't make it to the Super Bowl this year, it, it's not going to happen for the next fifty, man. We got to do something now. Well, let me well, save we're you the suspense. We're getting rid of so much talent, you know. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Look at this. You guys get me on football now, man. Look, we got we signed we signed Flowers for about seventeen and a half million dollars per year. Yep. Right. And then you go over have you go over to San Francisco and their entire defensive line. You know, you got Bosa over there. Their starting and second string accumulate for twenty million dollars. Mm-hmm. Okay. You see what they did this year? Yeah, oh, that's yeah. the. That's we the, got seventeen and a half for one dude. That's the best uh, comprehensive defensive squad I've seen. Oh, ever. they're they're. Oh they're yeah, yeah. Unit, since they're I've right since unit. I've personally been a football fan, that's the best one on the field I've seen. Maybe maybe those early mid two thousands Ravens teams had one that was comparable. Yeah, but two thousand Ravens best defense ever, man. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I I think San Francisco this upcoming year, if they play the season. Might be the best defensive team we've ever seen. Yeah, maybe. I, look, I'm glad you brought up Bosa because he graduated from the Ohio State University oh, last year. He did. Um, he and, did. Uh, no him, him and his brother, Joey. And then we got <laughs> yeah. uh, we got Young coming up in this draft. He should go one, but uh, he'll go two. Um, man, you're an f- entertaining guy, dude. Uh, follow uh, at Jerry Wayne AR14 on Instagram. Um, I appreciate you being on the show, dude. Um, yeah, thanks for having me, man. Shit, this has been a blast. Uh, thank you, man. Um, for Danton and Anthony Holloway, Jerry Wayne, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. Thanks, guys. Yep. All set? Thank you, buddy. Yes. Greatly yeah, appreciate, yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Hey, if you guys ever want to do a talk some sports, man, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll talk football until I'm, I'm blue in the face, man. Oh, I'm down. I am fucking. I'm, I'm a big football guy. Down. So are we. So we have a sports show. We'll have you. We'll invite you back in the fall when football gets fired I, yeah, up we'll, again. We'll make you one of the one of the league hosts for our fantasy football. We have like five or six different leagues. Yeah, I, and, and they're all oh, like man. signed I, jerseys from yeah. like around the world. So, so like, I'll be, be the, your best players. You could be the AR14 league host. Yeah. AR14. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but thanks a lot for having me on, guys. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, man. Hell yeah, yeah man. Great. Have a great day. Thank you for your time. Yep, you got it. Yep, see, see you guys man. later. Bye, buddy.